Welcome to Chet TV News. Here are your headlines. The District of Chetwin has received top honors. The municipal elections have begun and are causing a stir. And a man is dead after he was shot early Wednesday morning in Grand Prairie. Welcome to Chet TV News. I'm Callie Warren. The District of Chetwin received recognition last month for reducing corporate greenhouse gas emissions. The Green Communities Committee was created to develop strategies, actions, support and incentives to help companies comply with the Climate Action Charter. This year, Chetwin was given a Level 2 acknowledgement and was received the, received the title of Climate Action Community of 2013. Fort Nelson Councillor Kimberly Eglinski is challenging Bill Streeper for the mayoral spot. Eglinski has sat on the council for six years and this is the first time someone is going to go head-to-head -head against the incumbent mayor. Prince George Councillor Murray Krause is sticking to what he knows. In his sixth term, he wants to act as the voice of social conscience and wants to add more balance to discussions. Here in Chetwin, Rochelle Galbraith will be running for a councillor position. Serene Campen and Anita Prescott are chasing school trustee spots as well. Anyone interested in running for a spot can pick up their papers at their local district office or city hall. An Edmonton man was shot and killed outside of Canadian Brew House in Grand Prairie early Wednesday morning. Officers were called to the report of gunshots around 1 a.m. The RCMP believed that 28-year-old John William Rock was targeted after he left the bar and that it wasn't a random act. Officers are all asking anyone who visited the bar on Tuesday evening to contact the Grand Prairie RCMP. The North Peace Regional Airport in Fort St. John is being recognized by the Aviation Council. The airport is a recipient of this year's William Templeton Award for its Fly Local Campaign. The campaign itself generated more than 676 written and online pledges and has seen an increase of 60% in passengers over the last six months of 2013. This ceremony will take place on October 31st at the Silver Wings Award Gala. The Dawson Creek Fire Department is not treating the fire on 97th Avenue as a suspicious one. After two days of investigating the fire, the fire department is still unsure as to what sparked the fire in Dawson Creek. The fire which consumed a home injured no one, but spread significantly to the adjacent property. Deputy Chief Bob Fulton said that a home insurance company was being sent up to investigate this weekend to find out the cause of the blaze. We'll have more on that story later next week. And Canada has started work on its Sunset Prairie Lodge. The camp, located 55 kilometers outside of Dawson Creek, will host 2,500 workers that will be working on the company's Montney Shale gas projects. The company is looking at workers to start moving in in the first months of 2015. Local businesses, however, are, are anxious about the camp and its construction. They fear that they will be cut out of the boom and have trouble competing for contracts to supply the camps. The PRRD is also concerned about getting information of when and where these kinds of camps are going to be built. At the community meeting about this, in Canada told local business owners that they would procure goods locally when possible and that this would create 15 to 25 permanent jobs in Dawson Creek. If the camp does grow to 2,500 workers, the population of the camp would rival populations of local municipalities like Chetwind and Tumbler Ridge. Steelhead LNG has announced Victor Ojeda as their new president. He was the former head of LNG Canada and has an experience leading energy projects around the world. Steelhead LNG CEO Nigel Kazemko says that he is excited for Ojeda to strengthen our local relationships. Prince George will be changing two less than desirable places that have caused problems for the city in the past. Between now and Thanksgiving, the city will be taking out trees and reducing the size of the hill at Millennium Park. They will also be removing the planters on 3rd Street between George and Dominion Streets. These places have become homes to illegal activity and have caused more trouble than good. Seniors in Fort St. John are in for some tough times. According to Kim Wilson, the manager of the North Peace Seniors Housing Society, it's going to be three to four years before an apartment is available for seniors who get on the list now. The society currently has a wait list of over 113 people for their independent living apartments. However, they only have 100 apartments in the building. There are 18 other apartments which are classified as independent living with meals. That has a wait list of 26 people. Wilson added that she receives applications from all over BC and occasionally Alberta. 
With the boom in Fort St. John, more seniors want to move there to be closer to their families. With this increased rate of applications and the lack of housing, the society intends to open up another wing with an additional 25 units in the short term. They have also approached the Provincial Finance Committee for a reprieve. Schools are back in full swing in the piece, but they are not without major challenges. With the impending resource boom in the piece, there is an influx of new students in Fort St. John. This means much larger class sizes, which is now forcing local schools to rethink how they lay out their schools and classrooms. With the lack of more schools in the area, some schools are having to convert their computer labs and libraries into classroom spaces. The Ministry of Education estimates that the headcount of School District 60 will jump by about 25 by 2023. At the Provincial Finance Committee meeting, officials from School District 60 re requested two new elementary schools and a middle school be added to the capital plan. However, the Ministry has since stated that the three new schools requested will not be funded under the Ministry's current plan. The current priority for the Ministry is the construction of one new elementary school northwest of Fort St. John. Meanwhile, enrollment in School District 59 has dropped a further 25 since 2004. Superintendent Leslie Lambie said that it was too early to speculate why this drop projected at 100 was higher than usual. Despite these issues, School District 60's finances showed operating surplus of $3.9 million, while $2.6 million of that is restricted to uses like Aboriginal education and staffing contingencies. one3 is left unrestricted. Some of this money could go into funding additional spaces for the growing number of students. October is Foster Family Month in British Columbia and the province is asking compassionate people that could be a strong and positive caregiver for a child to visit the provincial website below or call the Foster Hotline. The 17th Annual Wedding Show in Fort St. John is coming up this weekend, Sunday, October 5th at the Pomeroy Hotel from 1 to 6 p.m. There will be over 40 local vendors, wedding planning seminars and three different fashion shows. Next week, the Chetwin Rec Center will host the annual Coal Forum we will be covering the meetings extensively and be showing the entire event on Chet TV. The Junior Canucks have a busy weekend ahead. They host the North Peace Navigators tonight and then they will host the Fort St. John Huskies tomorrow. Peace FM's Matt Nicholson will be calling the games all weekend and you can listen live at Peace FM 94.5 in Chetwin or 1041 in Dawson Creek. Five Star Fight League's Vindicated is set tonight at the Fort St. John Curling Club. There are going to be 12 fights on the card and headlining is middleweights Brad Stewart and Brendan Kornberger. Stewart is ranked fifth in Canada under his category. Thank you for watching Chet TV News. You can always tweet me at Warren underscore Callie or email me at Callie at PeaceFM.ca. We leave you now with the Community Thrift Shop's application video and don't forget to vote on the BC Hydro website. TLC Community Thrift Shop and Training Centre Society is a group of volunteers and employees uh, with like-minded ideas and one common goal. We uh, reduce, reuse and recycle as much as we can, uh, tons and tons of uh, poundage per year. We also work alongside user groups to provide work experience for special needs children. Uh, children who witness abuse, we work alongside women's shelters, uh, alongside men's shelters, also hospitals and other nonprofit organizations. My name is Lori and I package things up so to put on the store. This young lady is a customer here and she's helping me today because it's hard to package three dolls in one little shot. Out back here we often so sort the donations that come in. Um, and it can be quite a challenge because there can be a wide variety of things in a box. We also look very carefully at the clothing to make sure that there's no buttons missing, no zippers broken, no holes in it. We want to always be able to provide good quality stuff and not low-end uh, cast-offs.
Right now when donations come in of slightly used and worn items that have broken zippers or pockets that are ripped off, we unfortunately have to throw them in the landfill. If we had a proper sewing center, we could actually sew zippers in, sew pockets, and be able to save even more from the landfill. My name is Fran and I bought this wedding dress here and I support the TLC's application to BC Hydro for a $10,000 grant. I support the TLC application to BC Hydro to get a sorting center and sewing center. I started volunteering here 14 years ago and it was my way of giving back to the community because I've lived here for 41 years now and I've seen Chetland grow from a small community to a community that's flourishing and it's more than just a thrift shop where you can come to buy your clothes. It's a, a small town community, it's like a hub, the hub of Chetland where people come to visit and see and, and see what's new every, every week. This is Cole Papalazero for your Chet TV 7 day weather forecast. Taking a look at Grand Prairie tonight, it will be overcast, a high of 6 and a low of 0 with a 70% chance of showers overnight. Saturday will be a mix of sun and clouds with a high of 16 and a low of 7. Sunday will be a mix of sun and clouds but mainly sunny, a high of 15 with a low of plus 4. Monday we will be having a mix of sun and clouds as well, a high of 17 and a low of 8, 40% chance of showers. Tuesday, we will have sunny skies and a high of 12 with a low of plus 4. Wednesday, we'll have lots of sun as well as a high of 8 and a low of 0. Thursday, we'll be bringing in a mix of sun and clouds, a high of 7 and a low of minus 2. Taking a look now at Prince George. Tonight, we'll be having some light rain on and off throughout the evening, clearing up by the morning, a high of 12 with a low of 0. Saturday, we will have a mix of sun and clouds with 30% chance of showers, a high of 16 and a low of 6. Sunday, we'll have a mix of sun and clouds, high of 16 and a low of 5, as well as a 40% chance of some rain later on in the afternoon. Monday will be cloudy with some showers, high of 17 with a low of 5. Tuesday has a 40% chance of showers happening throughout the day. Apart from that, mainly sunny with a high of 12 and a low of plus 4. Wednesday, it'll be sunny with a few clouds and a high of 12 with a low of plus 1. Thursday will be a mix of sun and clouds, a high of 10 and a low of plus 1. Taking a look now at Fort St. John's, it's going to be cloudy with an 80% chance of showers this evening, clearing the scattered showers overnight with a high of 10 and a low of plus 1. Saturday will be mainly sunny, a high of 16 and a low of 7. Sunday will bring a mix of sun and clouds, a high of 13 and a low of plus 4. Monday, a mix of sun and clouds with a high of 16 and a low of 9. Tuesday is looking to be a nice day, mainly sunny with a high of 10 and a low of plus 2. Wednesday, mainly sunny with a high of 6 and a low of minus 2. And Thursday will be a mix of sun and clouds with a high of 6, a minus 3 for the low. Taking a look now at Dawson Creek. Tonight they'll be seeing some light rain going into the early morning, a high of 9 with a low of plus 2. Saturday will be mainly sunny, a high of 16 and a low of 8. And Sunday will be mainly sunny with 40% chance of rain throughout the day, high of 14 and a low of 4. Monday is going to have a mix of sun and clouds and a high of 16 with a low of 9. Tuesday will be mainly sunny with a high of 11 and a low of plus 2. Wednesday is going to be nice with sunny skies, a high of 7 and a low of minus 1. Thursday will be mainly sunny, a high of 7 and a low of minus 3. Now taking a look at your 7 day forecast for Chetwin, tonight a 60% chance of showers this evening and into the early morning with a high of 13 and a low of plus 1. Saturday will be mainly sunny, a high of 16 and a low of 9. Sunday will have a 40% chance of showers but mostly sunny apart from that, a high of 16 and a low of 5. Monday will have a mix of sun and clouds and a high of 17 with a low of 8. And Tuesday will be mainly sunny with a high of 8 and a low of 0. Wednesday will be mainly sunny with a high of 8 and a low of 0 as well. And Thursday will be a mix of sun and clouds with a high of 9 and a low of 0. This has been your 7-day forecast for Chet TV. I'm Cole Papalazero.